Hello everyone, welcome to YK Reviews. We're going to be reviewing Chucky Season 3, so let's get into it here. So with this review, it's going to be four episodes long in terms of the review. If you're not aware, due to the writer's strike, they were unable to finish production filming. So the first four episodes were all done and wrapped up, so they were able to air it. But then the remaining four episodes are going to be having to wait till the writer's or the actor strike is over for them to be able to finish production. So that's going to be coming out next year. Still unsure of when that's going to be because based on like what happened in this show or based on what happened in the finale, I don't know if there's going to be a time gap and they're going to continue like 12 months later or if they're going to be focusing on the events straight after this and for the last four episodes. Still, everything is unsure and also no release dates when it comes to the last four episodes. But we'll talk about the first four episodes because I'm kind of in like a mixed bags when it comes to this. And of course, spoiler alert. So if you haven't seen the show, definitely check out the episodes. Come back to this because the show opened up very strongly. It had that very strong child's play tone, like the more darker tone. Season two, I made my review on it. You can check it out somewhere over here where Season two, they focused a lot more on the more campy tone, the seed of Chucky, bride of Chucky, that kind of tone and that kind of vibe to it. So the elements of the goofiness, the silliness, the campy nature really was more when it comes to season two. But then those two first opening episodes of season three, it really went back to that dark tone. Episode one was very similar to like the curse of Chucky. You've got that really slow build up and suspense. This starts off straight away, no time wasting, has Chucky in the White House. You have no idea what he's doing there, why he's there, how he even got there, but he's slowly just killing off people in the White House. And even the death sequences there, like it was a very impressive, like for a TV show, the kills that they had in this was absolutely brilliant with the letter opener slicing up that lady, the secretary's throat. You've got, you had Miss Fairchild getting killed off. You had Henry, the little boy, his secretary. Chucky gets him to shoot himself in the head. So there was some brilliant kills in this show and in the opening first couple of episodes here. But once we got to like the next three episodes, it definitely teeters along the tone and vibe of season two. Especially with episode three, you got a lot of, of that campy nature. You get a more of a backstory of what's going on with Chucky, where he's at, what's happened and how he got to the White House. We find out that Jennifer Tilly has got arrested. We come to find out that due to the exorcism that occurred back in season two, in the finale of season two, that Dumbala has left him. And so he's dying, he's aging out. He needs to kill people and make enough sacrifices to Dumbala so that he's able to recover and able to become not immortal, but like, you know what I mean. So episode three, you have that focus. And then you even, like I said, have that amazing opening kill in the taxi with Keenan Thompson. And that, um, like, honestly, one of my favorite kills in this whole series was that umbrella sequence where Chucky's just shoving that umbrella inside his mouth and the umbrella just opens up inside. Like, that was a stroke of genius when it comes to that kill. But you've got that type of kill. Then you have him visiting the doctor's office, like a full-on doctor's office in the doctor's robe. And then you've got the doctor touching Chucky's balls, which I just thought was just... I was on board more or less with the episode itself, but I just felt like it heavily leaned towards that campy tone, Bride of Chucky, Seed of Chucky vibe to it. But in terms of the episode itself, we did get more understanding of what's going on. And honestly, like the kills were fun. When it comes to like the Jennifer Tilly, Tiffany Valentine side of things here. So like I mentioned, she's getting arrested. She's got this storyline, this plot where she's in court. She's getting her trial done. You've got the Devin, Jake and Lexi appearing in there and they're making their statements. You get a brilliant dialogue from Nika when the jury gets read out and like we learn her faith that she's going on death row in Texas and you have that brilliant sequence with Nika but I mentioned it in the previous review like Nika was just so hard done in this show like having her limbs be chopped off in the wheelchair like we really didn't get a good version of Nika 
and but she has a brilliant delivery brilliant lines brilliant scene with Jennifer Tilly towards the end and then we don't really see much of her Jennifer Tilly in the finale now is having this scheme of how she's going to escape and the thing that frustrates me the most with this franchise is you've got this whole voodoo for dummies book that Jennifer Tilly's using where she's got these like wooden um wooden straw puppets that she gets a piece of like for example one of the prison inmates she gets a cigarette from them and then she ends up using that to kill off that character but even with that kill itself it just felt very goofy at times for example like she's got control of her she's got control of her body but then she's using the knife as like slicing it but the character itself just feels like they're having fun with it so they're getting their arms sliced they're getting their knife towards the neck they've got that potato peeler peeling on their hands it was just you don't really get the serious tone from it until eventually when jennifer tilly makes her put her head in the boiling water melting off her face which was brilliant kill by the way it just felt like that aspect and then the whole sequence and the storyline that we're going to get from jennifer tilly is that she's going to escape death row she's going to escape that prison but she's going to be doing it by using that voodoo for dummies and having these straw string wooden puppets whatever you want to call them to mind control or take over the bodies of these prison guards which i kind of wish there was better writing when it comes to that but also when it comes to the characters like you've got devin jake and lexi they weren't really utilized too much in the show itself. They were sort of just these characters that are going after Chucky. I can't remember what state they were in in the beginning of the show, in the beginning of season three, but with them and Miss Fairchild, who does get killed off eventually, they go end up going to Washington because that's where Chucky is. And that se- this season, they just spent trying to get in with the guy, the older brother from the White House family. They end up getting in. They have this party, this big party in the finale. And it just felt very, very underwhelming, especially when it comes to the finale. Not really much happened. Like you had this very slow build up with these characters, with the show, with the party itself. Like you didn't really take advantage of this Halloween setting inside the White House. It just felt very slow and methodical. Lexi ends up getting close to the brother. I honestly can't, the name is just escaping me right now. You've got Jake and Devin having this little White House tour and by the way Jake I don't know what he did between season two and season three where he just looks so muscular and bulky he's dressed up as a cowboy and you just see his biceps there and eventually the whole build-up for this episode for the finale is Chucky unscrewing the chandelier thingy on the White House that ends up falling in in the middle of the party crashing and killing off a whole bunch of people 13 people I believe it was including one of the babysitters and one dressing up as Mary Poppins which you're building up that character which leads to nothing and then one of the journalists where you kind of feel like that was being built into something eventually nothing comes of that and her body gets snapped in half maybe something will come of it because she takes a picture of herself but all of that writing and everything it just kind of goes down the drain when it comes to these characters like nothing was really built or nothing really just felt fleshed out and so the whole finale just felt like it was all leading up to the big confrontation between the kids and Chucky and then even that wasn't really explored too much it kind of just felt very underwhelming where they meet Chucky as he's getting being held by Henry to then eventually nothing really pays off or nothing happens after that and so with the season ending the mid-season finale you find out that Chucky just looks like an old disheveled man like a granddad saying that he's dying and that's closing off the show so again we've got the four episodes we've got eventually what's going to happen with part two probably coming out next year sometime so we're going to see what's going on with that like i said i hope they do continue when it comes to like in terms of the timeline have it continue where it's just focusing on the party and the atmosphere and the white house and we'll see what's going on when it comes to jennifer tilly's character but all in all a very strong start to the show but it kind of just like tiptoed a little bit meandered a little bit with the last two episodes i just wanted more when it comes to the the aura the tension building the storytelling from the first two episodes with that but now that they're going to go all batshit crazy you'll have the the kids versus chucky having that main focal point i hope they do do more with it but i feel like this may be a controversial take or hot take or whatever you want to call it but i do feel like they do need to kill off one of the main three characters whether it's Devon whether it's Jake or whether it's Lexi they need to do something when it comes to it just to like up the stakes even more because because even Chucky in the show in episode three had the list of every person he had on his hit list and 
with the Caroline character too, like not really much came of that. We saw what happened in episode three and their connection. But then when Lexi even saw Chucky, nothing about like mentioning her sister or anything like that. So I feel like they definitely need to up the ante. It's like they've killed off all the parents in season one and season two. Now they need to really do something to really up the stakes once again in season three. So we'll see what's going to happen with that. But if you have seen the show, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What your thoughts are about the first four episodes, which episode really stands out for you, which kill really stands out for you. Let me know in the comment section down below. And quick shameless plug, I am doing the Nightmare on Elm Street reviews, retrospective reviews. So I've done the first five movies. I'll put a playlist somewhere here. You can go check that out and then keep an eye out on the channel. We're going to be doing the rest of the franchise with the tier ranking video on Halloween. So if you are new to the channel, if you do like that type of content, definitely consider subscribing, liking the video all that YouTube jazz so that you're never missing out on these types of videos. But I thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. This is YK Reviews.